Thank you.
Bitte pate, bitte bitte pate. Oh, people are lurking. KP Dubs is multitasking. Vaden's dropping bits. KP Dubs is dropping bits. Lisa Hill, thank you so much for 13 months using that Prime. Appreciate you. I love that you're also in the Discord, so I get to say it to your face, ish, ish, to your earbuds. Um, Emma the ta nope. <laughs> I'm the cartographer. Uh, it says, happy book day, book friends. Uh, thank you so much for 13 months. Appreciate you. And I get to say that to you too. Uh, Ember and Delia, we just hit a year. Oh, that rhymes. Wonderful. Kate, thanks for fitting. 15 months. That's wonderful. STS, we're on 25 now. 25 months. Uh, regards, Darren's just dropped by to do nine months of subbing. Quidjibu is on six months and says congrats on partner i got a uh, peanut butter burp there it is excuse me please a little bit of a little bit of butter burp uh thank you kevin dubs for not missing a burp on that one heaven forbid <laughs> we let that slip why does everything look really orange what am i doing wrong with my lighting setting how is everyone let me know how you're going is book good Is book good? Book is confusing. Colleen, you are not alone. What the fuck is happening in this book? <laughs> because everything that we've just read in Gideon the Ninth is a lie? Is a lie? Is not real? Didn't happen? Could have happened? Is this the reality that we're facing now? Was Gideon even a person? These are the things that we'll be discussing and more once people stop subbing because there's so many. Glass Dagger 22, thank you so much. Yeah, I don't see you in the chair. Uh, you're saying book good though. If you say so. Uh, T-Bone says, congrats on making partner. Thank you. I really appreciate that. KP Dubs is doing some great petitioning for September, and I really appreciate that. There's like a 30% discount. Colleen, thank you for 16 months. Colleen, you're so tech savvy. You always, you always like surprise me because like I have conversations with my mum, and most of you have heard how they've gone. <laughs> It's difficult to say the least. STS says, did you have to kill another partner channel in single combat to gain the title? Pretty much. That was that is closer than you think. <laughs> what had to happen? Uh, Bucko is loco. It says Vaden. Uh, for a princess, congrats. Appreciate you. Kate says, one of my favorite things about this book isn't just isn't just that it's in the Gideon verse, but that it's such a stark depiction of mental illness and grief and trauma from within as opposed to without i would love for you to explain that a little bit further because i saw it fly over my head somewhat and i want it to absorb kate you're there tell us one of the favorite parts of this book oh like i said it's like you're inside someone's brain as they are dealing with mental illness and trauma and grief and like you know dealing with death uh because pharaoh you know had gideon die for her and then all this like other stuff happened and she's like only brought into this world and there's a lot of like guilt there like survivor's guilt because of what happened to gideon and just her own issues like even if none of this had happened Hera wasn't exactly the picture of mental stability anyway so, so the Gideon thing did happen. Gideon did sacrifice herself to be absorbed into Harrow. That was that did happen, or or was that happening in her head and not actually taking place? Because Ortus is her cavalier. Happened. It did happen. Sorry, that cut up. It's just the problem with this book in trying to explain it is because I've read the whole thing hard to explain without spoiling got it okay oh thank you true score and yeah like um but oh yes Aline, when you, Aline has a good point there when you have trauma or grief you know all these kind of things we talked about it yesterday talking about um mental illness and trauma and you know losing a piece of yourself like for vicious 
happens to where you block things out. Your brain is like, you can't deal with this. I'm disassociating you so you can exist as a person. Like, there's lots of that where people will not remember things that happened to them, or they'll remember it differently, or, you know, a lot of people who have sexual violence trauma won't remember, like, faces will become mangled because it's just their brain's way of, like, you can't deal with this. I'm protecting you. Yes. So yes. With, <gasps> or, like, with Otis. Oh, Vaden just gifted a bunch of subs. A bunch of subs! Oh, thank you. I will address that in a sec, uh, Vaden, but you, Kate, you're in the middle of something that's super important about this book. Yeah, like, her... Harrow's misremembering is a reaction. Got it. So, and that's so hard. So the fact that it's so confusing to us, the thing, one of the things I like about it, because when you are someone who's dealing with, like, crazy, not crazy, but, like, big mental illness issues or you're in, like, a mental crisis, inside your brain makes no sense. Yes. Things that make sense to you, to the outside, is strange and tiring and frustrating. And people are just kind of like, why can't you just think normally? And it's like normally when books describe this kind of thing, they're describing it from like outside of person as if it's like, you know, then she thought this, she saw this in her head. And it's very explained know the way a book normally would be but this is almost like we're inside harrow's brain and it's confusing yes and timelines don't make sense and she's lying to herself which means she's lying to us because she's an unreliable narrator and it's got all of those things going on but i will say a lot of the stuff that go you'll one is interested in this book and they're confused but they still are enjoying it once you finish go back and read it again no, thank you. Uh, once you see the end, all of the things in the front will be like, oh. Got it. Okay. I, I have heard um, by doing more research that the end, there is a payoff and it is very gripping. I feel like I need a little bit more of an anchor so I can s just, I know what the fact is and I know what happened and then I can understand more when we are drifting off truth because and i don't like with this book this is not a book for everyone yeah. this is a and as a bookseller it's my job to sell books to people this is a hard book to recommend to other people because it's not written in a way that nearly every other book is written you know what i mean yes i think we talked about this once upon a time when we read the last wish the witcher yes I, because it's timeline was not in order i liked and, that i was i was all right with that yeah and this one is like that but it doesn't have even the same structure because the last wish structure to the way it was written in terms of its tenses its sentence structure its narration it just wasn't in the right it's like someone cut up the book and put it in a different order it was still written as a normal book but this one even like the tenses are always changing yes like all it's just very nebulous and liquidy in a way that's not of a book i like that you so, say liquidy because it's like that it's not tangible yeah it's it's very very strange and so it's definitely one of those books that's like not for everyone and fine Yes, and I, I, and I think we are, like, again, everyone's opinion is right because that's what opinions are, right? Um, I think that having people that have questions is great so that we as a group can try and figure it out because sometimes clear answers aren't going to happen for us. I also think people liking it and not liking it, both great. Uh, but we have showed up and we are here to talk about Harrow the, oh, I've got the wrong thing because I was going to, Harrow the ninth. Uh, quickly going back to this one, though, I just want to address so many subs that were just happening and so many congratulations because this bitch hit partner thanks to adam vision who was such a big help in making that happen um because we've been scratching our head for what do you reckon two years now adam we've been scratch scratching the noggins on how that happened uh 
just right now, GK Gamer Fan has subbed for their 10th, uh, 12th month. Sorry, happy one year, boo. How awesome is that? KP Dubs just dropped a thousand bits. Appreciate you, good sir. Uh, you are actually really digging this book and I'd love to chat with you about it next. Sarah the Pearls just followed. Rykops being the best kind of troll out there has just gifted a sub to Adam Likes Boom Boom. So that's what happens when you gift a sub like that. You get me to read it out and everyone wins. Uh, KP Dubs gifted a few subs uh, to A. Paul Yo, uh, Mephistopheles, and Um Num Num. So if you just got one, they gifted a sub by KP Dubs. Go make sure you say hi. Why am I so orange? Make sure you say thank you. Make sure you say thank you to KP Dubs. Uh, Mega the Geek a subbed for six months in a row, eight total, says Grats on Partner, well overdue. Thank you, Mega the Geek. It's been a hot second since we've been gaming. Hope you've been well. Uh, Steranka01 has just followed. Thank you so much for the follow. Almost active, gifted a sub to Bingo Bobcat. Thank you so much for that. Vaden, here we are. Gifted 10 subs to Lexine, Price Must Flow, TYM99, Fandom, TJ Thunder, JJ Strip1138, Da Vinci, oh hello, uh, Meanie66, Aruko, a boy named Sue, best pa. Uh, so if you got one from Vaden, make sure you say thank you. And then Adam gifted one to best partner ever. Thank you. And thank you to Colleen and Glass Dagger and regards Darren and everyone else who I thanked earlier for renewing subs, for celebrating, for supporting. Uh, wait, KB Dubs, you just gifted three more subs to Videotron and Betray, wait, Beta Ray Will, Catastrophe 444. Thank you so much for that. And Ori Lilu, seven months resubbed, but 11 total. Wow, uh, we hit a hype train with all of that. And KP Dubs being our um, captain says choo choo. So thank you for that, Captain. Uh, Kate, uh, Pilang that whole time, by the way, Kate, just wanted you to convince us and to let us know that it's going to be okay. With this book, will it be okay? Kate, you got to let us know that thing that we're, it's going to be okay. We. Oui. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Kate also just co uh, commented oh. saying, I have my copy of Nona pre-ordered already. I'm very curious to see if it will be a different structure than the other two since the books in this series are so different from each other already. Oh, Lisa, you've pre-ordered as well. You're going to commit. I think I have to opt out after this one quietly. Toaster Poster says, hi, Maud. Hi, chat. Books. Thank you for resubbing for 11 months. And Jellyfish Oil, first time chatter, says, g'day. Hello, Aussie. Where are you from? Did I fall asleep in the tanning salon? I don't know why it's so orange. Orange. I don't know if it's the settings. I'm just going to leave. Just to grab my phone. Mess with these back light settings, maybe? To compliment. They get better colors. Make it a bit warm glow. Oh, there we go. Maybe. Stop talking to me. No. Oh, ah, that's good. I don't even know what I did, but it's worked. Okay. Okay. Guy Darling's gifted us up to monkey bars. That's cute. KP Dove says, video good. Video is better now. Um, we, ja, ni. These are different languages. Hmm. Uh, regards, Darren says, Nona will be the, uh, a day Kindle purchase for me. Mm. Play, play the board says, I have no idea what to expect with Nona. I can't wait. Nona Jessimus, right? So it's still Harrow, but Nona Jessimus. Can I get any kind of confirmation for that? Oh, maybe you look more Aussie. Maybe you look tan. Catastrophe just thanked mm. KP Dubs. Yes, Colleen. I posted, um, a link somebody who had read Nona and uh, kind of compared the three books. So in the Discord, there's a link that tells uh, it apparently is a very different style. And she kind of, um, without giving a lot of spoilers, uh, kind of compares the three books. 
Um, does it say anything? Oh, Gory, thank you so much. Just popping in saying, what? You absolute legend. You freaking did it. Not really. <laughs> We had to, we had to do a little bit of heavy lifting to make that one happen, because <laughs> um, yeah, I was just getting completely basically flatlined and ignored. But you know, turns out if you complain enough to a friend and that friend is willing to do something about it, that's how you get shit done. Um, Lovely of you to pop by. Uh, King Sakhasak. King Hachsak. How do you say that? King Haskak says, Congratulations on making partner. Yeah, uh, Colleen, we'd love to read that link again. Kate's asking for it because we'd like to learn a little bit more about the difference between these three books but what an amazing flex as an author this is the thing I really 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 want to reiterate that I have zero shame uh or zero sorry I don't want to shame I have zero uh disdain for the author uh Tamsin Muir who is a, a Kiwi author who is actually showing just how incredible her writing is by completely and utterly changing the style um do I think it was slightly ambitious to completely flip the script and the first like t the first book that we just read and somewhat got invested in and finally started to understand was just almost wiped away from us? Uh, that was a bit hard for me. I need, and I'm okay saying it, I need to be spoon fed when it comes to this book. And I think she's trying a few too many things like, amnesia, um, unreliable narrator, unlikable characters, unfunctional sentence structure, overuse of metaphor and simile that, and I'm, I, I could be alone in this and some people could be eating it up being like more, but for me, it's really getting in the way of understanding what the fuck is going on. And I need that more than anything spence alive thanks for the follow njh4471 thank you so much for the follow and gaia thanks for giving me some love by the way we did this you're part of this team hmm. colleen says proud of you Maud. you work hard to get where you are colleen that's very sweet that's very sweet Cito says congratulations uh kp dub says she really really does make sure she uses anatomy terms mm-hmm Sure does. KP Dubs, you are one of the few that is really kind of enjoying the rush of this book and and understanding or are interested in what's going on. I want to hear your take on this. I, I'm not sure how to describe it. It's almost like reading a mystery novel to me. Like I'm trying to figure out what's going on and all the different uh, theories in my head keep driving me to be like, okay, is that right? I got to read more. I got to read more. I gotta find out more. I'm not even sure if I like it or love it or hate it. I just need to know what happens at the end. I'm just striving to get there. Okay. So, but you are you, in a state where you understand enough of what's happening to be invested. Yeah. Um, and it took a few chapters to get it, but you start to realize that when she's in second person, it's a present, or at least the present as far as like after she's become a lictor, versus third person when she's remembering things that we know didn't actually happen that way. So, so um, um, it, it, took, it took a bit to get used to the second and third person transitions and what they were telling you in the book. I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of my first questions. It is really fascinating and unique. We've only, we, we've had not even a handful of books that have tempted to do a second person. I believe the only ones that we had were the first sort of like um, uh, portion going into each chapter of Night Circus. Oh, thank you. I was looking, how do you, Adam Vision, how do you get in my head with this shit? How do you know I was looking for the browser source? How do you do that in stream labs? Yes, yes, yes. One second. I'm just trying to do it so that everyone's name pops up when you talk. How do you know? V 
Very clever. Yeah, look. Yay. Thank you, Adam. I don't understand how you get that every single time. Like, I didn't even say it out loud this time. You just knew. P.S. Switch says, congratul... Well, P.S. Switch. Switch, P switch says, congrats, Maud. Thank you so much. Uh, Serenka says, what even is second person? I'm so glad we asked these questions because this is such a good uh, discussion point. So uh, thank you for asking that. And let's get into it. I'm just going to move the chat box just a little bit. Um, so first person is... I opened the door and I walked to the left and I noticed this was happening and I said to this person, so that's I, first person, I, talking about that. Uh, second person uh, in books and narrative is you. You walked through the door and you looked to the left and you noticed this thing. You, so that's how a second person is written. And then third person is Maud walked down the corridor and Maud opened, uh, she, she opened the second door to the right and was, she, she was dismayed by what she saw. So that's your first, second and third. What's, what could fourth person be? Just a sound wave emanating into your body, which then projects the image of what happens. <laughs> Sick. All right. Um, now, KP Dubs was saying it took a little bit to get into um, first, uh, sorry, into the second to third person and that you start to understand that that's how you can discern the difference between the timelines. When it's you, you're like, right, I am Harrow in the present. And then when it was um, third person, it's something happening in the past. I found the switch between second and third person so much easier than... Um, flashbacks that didn't occur because that's supposed to be the thing that anchors you to what happened in the first book but now it's completely contradicting so I'm okay with second to third that I didn't mind it took me a little bit because I like tuned out for a second and came back in and I'm like wait gr grammar error and then I was like no you donkey uh, she's going between uh viewpoints but it's the telling of a story with no I just need like a little bit of like a hint where it's like it's almost as if Harrow can't remember or it's, you know, or Ianthe being a little bit more of the audience asking the questions and using Ianthe as like the exposition, but they've silenced her. So it's like I have zero answers to work on and only questions and that's not enough for me to want to stay into the story. Uh, but who else uh, liked, disliked, second to third person? Star Pilot 6 says, I loathe second person. Uh, but anyone who's in the chat, if you want to unmute, let's talk about the second and third person switches. Thank you, Toaster Poster. I Colleen. don't mind the switches. Um, I'm okay with the second person, but um, I wondering if this is an inner voice or someone else um, rewriting history for her. It, um, it's confusing, but that's not really where I'm getting lost. Where are you getting lost? Well, just the order of event, events. I was following along. I felt like I really had a handle on it. And then I, I dozed off listening to it at some point and could never figure out what I had missed when I tried to go back. And I've been a little confused ever since. Yes. And I'm still struggling with the descriptive language. So I, uh, Tamsin will focus on the dialogue exchanged and the reaction, uh, like um, there was a conversation, let's say it's between Harrow and Ianthe and... Harrow is getting quite overwhelmed by the conversation. And so they'll have excruciating detail about the droplet of sweat that is making your way down sort of like the small of the back. But I can't tell you where the fuck they are having this conversation, what the room looks like, uh, what context this conversation is occurring in. But thank God I know the color, shape, size, and smell of this bead of sweat 
that is bothersome to me. I got double alert box happening. That's okay. We can shine like this. Uh, SCS is gifting some subs. Thank you so much for that. Morn underscore 80, the gaming closet Twitch, Twitch, uh, White Freeze 801, Secular 12, and Trisha Hirschberger all got gifted subs just now. Uh, if you got gifted a sub by STS, make sure you say a big thank you in the chat just there. Uh, yeah, you did. You just gifted one to Tr Tr Trish, which is really cool. And uh, Thorgrim 2424, follow Pastico20, uh, just followed as well. Welcome. It's my first stream as a Twitch partner. I've been streaming regularly for two and a half. Just shy of two and a half years. I do book clubs. I do book clubs. Fuck. <laughs> and I panic. Welcome. Crushed it. <laughs> book club. <laughs> ah. I do book. Uh, yeah, we, we talk about books. Uh, that's the book we're doing. It's Thames and Muir's Harry the Ninth. I put this up and this, let's make it a little bit bigger, bigger so we can see it. Um, these are the new characters. I, uh, Colleen was, you said Colleen, and let's chat about it again, that you just kind of did a little bit of looking up. So you had a little bit more information because it was lacking so much information that it was hard to follow. And so you did a little bit of exploring yourself, right? Online, did a little look-see, little Googles. Yeah, just, just a little bit, just enough to kind of figure out where we were headed. Um, and that really helped. Yes, I, oh. I I really was inspired by you. And so I looked up images and my goodness, did this help because it's Mercy, Mercy Morn, the first elder sister. There are seven different ways to describe this fucking woman's name. And I and then it's John. Uh, and this is actually one of my questions where it's like, Meh. it's uh, where, where did I write it? John, God, teacher. Does that mean he's also emperor? Help, Kate. Colleen says yes. Yeah. So if every single character has six, oh my gosh, catch 22. Did you do 22 again? And 122 people are watching right now. And it was just 32 minutes and 22 seconds. Did you plan that? Conspiracy. Happy partner, catch 22 says. Thank you. You just gifted us up to P5G5, Volvo Tech, Dark Star, Animosity X, Wib Wobbler. Man, some of these names are so good. Sven Troy, Marty Nelson, Yaddy Bears, Flying Out, Dudley Do It, <laughs> Do It, Do It, Do It. Uh, this is a personal favorite. Oh, that's how you say this person's username. You are WWHHJ. Oh, I think I crushed that. Sub zero X two jellyfish underscore oil who just joined us as a first time chatter. Hey, you just got to get to the sub. Awesome, Pai Lang, who's in here. Yay! Well done, Pai Lang. Scored a gifted sub. Uh, Krillis one battle beastie ninety two. I am TJ Williams Malig Menagerie. Nice. I'm no Tasper. Okay. Iguga. <laughs> That's a great name. Iguga. <laughs> Salva Guefa uh, Delfrak. Uh, you all just got gifted a sub. Wow, it was a lot of names. And Critter Nation, thank you for seven months and saying congrats on partner. Uh, Akoto Roku says, one of these days, I'm going to get around to these lesbian necromancers books. They're on my list. We are going par uh, partner. We are going a bit spoiler here, just talking about the first half of the book, which is kind of like talking about how the book is written, the new characters here, uh, part of the plot uh, somewhat character development, but we're not talking about the entire book. So if you have read it all, let's steer clear of the ending big time because most of us haven't read it yet. Uh, M the cartographer says, lol, I love that the emperor's name is just John. Makes me think that he's just a Wizard of Oz type guy who's just failing upwards in power. Um, did anyone else get confused about the 17 names that everyone had or is that just me not coping? Was it bother? Was it hard for anyone else? Oh, I mean, you've watched Game of Thrones, mod. Yes. Everyone's got like ten titles in that show. 
Yes, but I can see them. I guess that's true. But no, the, the, that didn't confuse me at all. There was just a time where I was just like, oh, John. And then he's like, God, no. Emperor, no one ever calls him Emperor. But, they, but the whole plot line is around the Emperor being murdered. And then it's like, um, John, please call me teacher. And I'm like, did you end up getting the physical book of this, right? I did. I had to. But you didn't like the narrator. I'm going to do an impersonation. Doesn't it have a, um, cause the first book had a thing in the front. Remember we went through it when we did Gideon, how it had the whole list of everyone's names yeah. and their houses. Yeah. I think this might have it in it too. There is the drama, drama, there is the dramatist persona, persona, and it's just a bunch of names crossed out. Not helpful. You wrote it, but then you crossed it out. That's the theme. More crossed out. What does that mean? Also, would everyone like me to do a reading? I think the cross out names are the uh, cavaliers. Oh, because the, ca the, the 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 to become a lictor, they had to absorb the cavalier. Oddball, thank yeah. you. <laughs> I was getting worked up. Uh, I have been raided by Trisha Hirschberger, <gasps> who says happy partner birthday. Trisha, STS gifted you a sub moments ago. Thank you so much to all the dragon riders who are swinging on by. Trisha, did you manage to finish Horizon Forbidden West? Did it happen? Did you get it done? That's the most important question today. Uh, thank you, Dead Meat, for saying congratulations. Thanks for shouting out, Trisha Gaia. Um, we are doing a book club at the moment. Maybe I should figure out... No, yes. We're reading this book. It's the second in the sequel. And so it's gonna get a little spoilery, but for the next five minutes, maybe we could just not talk about the book because it could ruin someone's day. <laughs> Lesbian necromancers in space. Tomorrow you're gonna to finish the game. Fantastic. Okay, here's to tomorrow. You got sidetracked again. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for congratulating me on partner. I did nothing except complain and whinge. Uh, but here we are. Yay, I got rejected a lot. Uh, my browser source is in my head. That's fun. It pops up every time in my middle of my head. STS is gifting more subs. STS! It's just fingers on that button, isn't it? You just gifted one to Frequency Punch, Stephen Serrell, Trey Among Us. Boom, bubble, pa. That's a great name. And Alberage. Alberage, oh one. It is a special day. Thank you. And Alberage already says thank you so much for the gift sub STS. If it's not Alberage, it could be Alberac. Mm. Different ways to say different names. Uh, Gaia says you can reach your dreams by complaining. That's how. That's how it can get done. Am I the youngest sibling? <laughs> yeah, that was a bit obvious. Uh, Trisha, glad to have you uh, pop on by. I feel like by you and I combined, we've literally been streaming all day now. So that's something. KP Dub says, I am a complainationist. <laughs> I like that term. Uh, Lucky Stone, first time chatter, says I'm having a hell of a day. First time, uh, first I find out Trish streams and then I find out that Maid does as well. That's all right. I'm so out of the loop, says Loki Stone, but you're here now. Trisha says, don't sell it short. You've been working hard through all the pandemic and you are killing it on Twitch. I will say, I can't believe that so many people tune into a book club. The book club numbers have grown. Do you remember when it was like 50 and now it's like near, more than double that every time? Hell yeah, book club. Hell yeah, book club. Um, oh, what? Which one is it? Alberat, right? Is it Alberac? Al Albert mm. uh, and the cartographer says join us at book club join the Patreon Patreon she's doing a better job than I that I am hosting my own um, 
Patreon and chat for this. But if you need a book club and you want to read more sci-fi or fantasy and you've got a TBR, which is your to be read list, that's very, very long and you want a cool community to talk about books, even if you don't understand them, this is where you've got to be. Patreon.com slash Geekbomb if you want to get that. It is Alvarac. Alvarac. Yeah, yeah. Like the Alvarac in Ready Player One. Guy says, I've always said you can enjoy book chat whether you read the book or not. Yeah, but we're going to spoil it for you. Colleen says, I tell everyone I meet about book club. Oh, that's the sweetest ever. Toaster Post says, club good. <laughs> Great. Yeah, club good. Alisa says, books, books, books. That's our slogan. Book good and books, books, books. Uh, Kate says, if you're not someone who cares about spoilers, sometimes hearing uh, people talk about a book they want to read, what they read, makes you want to read it more. True, true, true. I'm usually not so fussed on spoilers, hey, because how I consume it at that time is always going to be different than by how someone says it. Yeah. Uh, Abrak says, random character from an old d and I just like the name. That's cool. Darcy, my brother, has just popped into the chat, everyone. Darcy, I'll make you a VIP, hey. VIP Dorizo. Now, Darcy, when you chat, you're going to have a VIP badge next to your name. Sorry, it's family perks and privileges here. Darcy says, I got given some books from Maud for my birthday recently. Darcy, do you want to tell everyone the books that I... Yeah, Kate, <laughs> instantly, Kate. No, shut up, Kate, because my mum's your mum, so this is your brother now too. Ha! <laughs> You got bullied into nepotism. <laughs> um, yes, Darcy's uh, writing a fantasy series at the moment and has spent a year and a half, a year. Like that's what he did in the pandemic. He's like, I'm going to write a book. And Darcy says, oh, what, I got another sister? Yeah, but we're Kate and I are constantly somewhat fighting, so don't even worry about it. Uh, Darcy says, check your Facebook mode. Okay. Okay. Live. I hope someone didn't die or something. Oh, I got a prologue for you if you want to read it. It's only 2.7 thousand words. I think your viewers might like it. It's very dramatic. Twitch partner, that's really good. And then you had a supportive gift face from the office. <gasps> oh. That's sweet, Darcy. Yeah, I was going to do a reading for everyone um, if people wanted to listen to darts prologue of the book did you say prologue what did you say excerpt what was the word prologue yeah so if darcy wants to read it there you go he finally said it darcy says i got brandon sanderson and dresden files i got him the first four five four or five books of the dresden files because i think you're going to eat those up and i got darcy the mistborn series and the best part about that darcy is that all of those have been read on book club so if you want to hear your sister talk with an awesome community about it for two or four, two, four hours a pop, you can see them all on my YouTube page. And thank you for congratulating me on partner. Oh, oh, oh. Alberac says, I've been working on a book series since 2001, and one of these days I'll actually get one published. Hmm. Dorisa says, I've got so many books to read. Well, it's a good thing that you have borderline insomnia. It just opens up a whole lot more time at night. Sorry, I know that's been tough. Everyone needs sleep, especially this gal. I've been getting seven hours. Um, I have a bunch of questions to talk about this book. Uh, this graph was very, very helpful. This is John slash God slash the emperor slash teacher. And then you got Augustine, unlikable. And then you got Mercy Morn, unlikable. And then you got Autus, killing machine who's trying to assassinate our protag. And then you got Ianthe, ah, oh, unlikable. And then you got Harrow, so unlikable. <laughs> Does anyone like any of these characters? Kate says Ianthe is my wife. Tell me all about that. I can't stand Ianthe. Love shithead characters. <laughs> oh, I'm fine when all the characters are unlikable. I, I love villain characters. I enjoy when people are jerks. <laughs> and so I'm very happy with it. I wish there was like a really great moment between Ianthe and Harrow. If you have a page, if you want to look for one, because I'm going to do a reading on how the narrator. Dear God, no, my book is buried somewhere upstairs, so I don't have it in front of me. Okay. 
Um, I'm 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 going to do a reading from how the narrator does it because some of you are listening, but others of you are absolutely not listening to the book and have no idea why I've been so livid in the Discord about it. I'm just trying to find some good dialogue between the two. Chapter four's all right. Um there's some good time. <sighs> they're, ju they're just so hard. If anyone's got a, a section or a page that stood out, you let me know. <sighs> Check out page 55. I think it has some very enlightening information on it. Oh, really? Okay, page 55. Okay. I just want one with dialogue so I can do my impressions of everyone. <sighs> 55. Uh, any particular part? Start from like the midway. I want to say like maybe like the fifth sentence in. Someone was standing to the right of your cot and holding the pillow down. As you reflexively bucked, one hand moved to put hard pressure on your throat, and your hyoid would have cracked had you not reinforced it with a thick rhyme of cartilage. They were a damn fool for not getting atop you. You found your fingers and plucked the thumbnail from your left hand, screaming into that asphyxiating white darkness and separated your bloody disc of keratin and flesh into a thousand racine fragments. Racine then expanded those into a multitude of jagged, splintering fleshes. Blind, airless, you swung these stiff and hairy missiles into your assailant like so much shrapnel. You heard them thud into flesh and ping off the walls and bury themselves in steel. That was one sentence. That was one sentence. There you go. Guy Darling said I would pay for more to read all the books to me. That's so sweet. Uh, Jimmy says that is so scary and I dig it. Yeah, so she's, that was a, I, someone was trying to kill her then already. Kate says I love it. <laughs> no, okay, so, um... <laughs> so the way that Ianthi talks so Ianthi is this blonde one who you would think purple's my favorite color oh you're still here that's so sweet does no go eat go eat thanks to the raid you're the best <laughs> you bite Trisha I've been laughing about that all day I'm so sorry for totally sidetracking and like bombarding your stream but um that's the best sound and that clip that you posted if you're not following uh Trisha on uh, TikTok, please do. She clips some amazing moments, and her son is a Spider Man, and I was actually one of them. We kept doing the sound where it's Trisha going, "You butt," and his raucous giggles is one of the best things out there. It's so sweet. So go follow Trisha, um, and Trisha streams all the time. So click her name and go follow her here as well. Um, so you would think that this character, Ianthi, I would really like. I'm going to do my impersonations of everyone here. Ianthi has a deep voice and she sounds like this the entire time. And she's just so overwhelmed by everything. Oh, Harrow, I can't believe you're still here. You're just Sarah. Like, that's how Ianthi talks. And then Harrow's a little bit higher than that. And then Mary Morn is just a little bit higher than that. But it's so breathy and everything's just so up here all the time. Colleen, am I getting this remotely correct? Because you've been listening to it as well. And Lisa, so have you. Yeah, that sounds pretty close. <laughs> that, and, They're spot and on. And she gets really nasally, um, especially like with, um, with Ortis in Canaan House. Oh, but he's really down here, isn't he? He's got a deep voice. And it's like, and then, yeah, I, I think Harrow's voice has changed like five times. Um, mm. uh, Michelle, you're saying you're not wrong. Are you listening as well? Are you? I am listening. Um, How have you well, found like, it? It's been fine. My threshold is so high, like, or oh, like so low. Bad. Like it, I started listening to audiobooks when just randos on YouTube would record themselves in 10 minute increments on their computer mic and upload that. And so 
I will true anything. <laughs> when I was in college and I had no money to spend on audiobooks, that's how I like got my reading in. Wow. It's just the old days. Uh, Kate, um, Kate, so yeah. Kate's saying that audiobook fails should be a segment on this show. A bunch of us, you know, you have one of the better thresholds out there where you're like, it doesn't bother me. I'm just here for the words. I'm picking the story up um, as I go along. There's a few of us that a narrator can make or break. Vaden, you're one of them. If the narrator isn't kind of like your jam, you might opt out or it's a bit difficult. Like I have to buy the book if I can't, if I can't absorb the narration. Vaden, are you listening to this one? Yes, I'm listening to it. How are you finding it? It's the same as the last one, so it's not particularly great. And but one of the issues also is like this with this book, a lot of her voices sound similar to characters from the old book as well. Like the one you just talked about, um, the Mercy Moore sounds a lot like the woman who was like on the verge of death all the time. And yes, the exact same voice. And it's really quite confusing. And I don't know if that's a, a sign of like a character development, um, which is like a, a note that's a spoiler, or if she's just not capable. Miss Necromancer says, narrators can't all be Gilbert Gottfried uh, reading Fifty Shades of Grey. That made me laugh so hard. My brother, Vaden, says that you should do audiobooks. Your voice is silky. <laughs> sure, thank you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I don't, well, I have a little bit of problems with my... Speaking, I think to do audiobooks, I'm alone with you, monotone, but that's somewhat intentional. There you go. Play the board. You're there. Did you want to unmute? It's, you said you liked the narration because the writing is so over the top, so it complements each other. Yeah, I think the writing is hilarious with the colorful use of similes and some of the unexpected humor in it. So the narration that is ridiculous kind of highlights what I enjoy the most about the writing. Um, are you lost or are you kind of understanding what's going on? Um, I feel like I'm on a road trip and I don't know where I am and I don't know where I'm going, but I'm looking out the window and enjoying what I see. What a great, that's a, that is a fantastic metaphor for, I mean, we're only speaking in metaphors at the moment. That's a great way to say it though. Um, and the cartographer says a great narrator will absolutely elevate the material though. It transforms the audiobook into a true performance, which can be delightful. Um, Clever Girl says, I've had to listen to middle schoolers read. <laughs> and then Harrow um, uh, walked down the, the I hear you on that one. That would be really tough. Uh, Miss Necromancer says the writing has a bit of camp to it. So if the narration is campy, it kind of fits, but I haven't heard any of it. So I can't comment on it. You've heard some of it. It was me. It was me. I'm doing it. Um, oh, Darcy's sending me the prologue if we want to ditch this. Okay, so this is the last little bit. Bricious fog turned suddenly to ice. I don't think I'm allowed to do this. In the unfamiliar annex where she now slept. Sorry, it's 1.6. Oops. So she talks a little bit like this, but in the back of her throat, and it's a British accent. But then when the characters talk, it'll be like this. And it's so dramatic and it's so over the top as if it's a play. Now, yesterday when we did the after show for Nerdist Book Club, I said in confidence that the reason why I can't stand that narrator isn't necessarily because she is bad, but it's because she does voices that I do as a crux as a crutch and I can't stand mine. So it's like listening to a version of me that I don't want people to know about. But if you go back through all fungens and flagons and there's all of a sudden an NPC and you'll notice that they start talking like this. <laughs> so I'm listening to all these characters and I'm like, ah, triggered. <laughs> these are all my, my bad. Oh, I like oddball says like me playing saints row. I know it's so, for yeah, but that one's more down here. <laughs> Um, uh, Starenka says, I grew up on Jim Dale and Stephen Fry. It's probably the reason I loved Harry Potter. Yeah, they're great. But these are just so dramatic. And I've never been in a conversation before when someone's spoken like this. Because if I was, I would fucking run. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be there. Yeah. So it does have that performance to it, but I, I, I it, 
It does need to be campy. I absolutely understand with that. It's just really hard. All righty, we've got some questions in the doc. Four of us are in here, so we kind of know what's happening. What do we think happened to Gideon? We were saying earlier that some of us truly think that those um, events of the first book did occur. Wait, Colleen, you had a theory. What was it again? My head's hurting. Um, I was thinking that she had blocked out the loss of Gideon and rewritten that part of history because it was too painful for her. So she's completely rewriting what happened in um, um, in Canaan House. And she never really liked Ortis to start with. He was, wasn't he the mama's boy that uh, didn't really want to be a cavalier? And she said, I wouldn't have you anyway. I thought he was the one that got into the ship and died because the ship exploded. Oh, yeah, that was... Um, yeah, they were trying to escape, though, weren't they? Um, yeah, that's the same guy. First, yeah. Be because at first he was supposed to have been the Cavalier and wanted no part of it. Got it. So why is he trying to kill Harrow? Um, so I don't know if this is a whole different Ortis now or because this seems to be uh one of the so-called saints or lictors and if ortis had been her cavalier he wouldn't be a separate lictor so now i i have no idea what's happening with that i got no idea what's happening full stop we are getting raided though how cool is that laser corn you are playing some games let's give laser corn a shout out how you going bud and a big hello to all um laser corn's audience as well you've been putting out some really really fun videos with the x smosh games crew which i love you guys have such great chemistry you're very very funny uh, and when you all play video games together, um, it's a lot of fun. GW2 Futur says, hi, Maud. A big hello um, to everyone who is just joining. Hi, it's Maud here. I am Geek Bomb. <laughs> I am Geek Bomb. Um, but I stream Geek Bomb because that's my company's name. But my name is Maud. I am a host online. I do a lot of geeky stuff. I pop up on Nerdist. We do a book club over there. But through Geek Bomb, I do a book club as well. And we are reading Harrow the Ninth. This is a sequel to Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, who is a Kiwi author who writes very complicated. And we are talking in detail about her writing, the fact that she jumps between first and third person. Hello, Uvuru13 for the follow. You sound a lot like this new favorite restaurant of mine called Uvo which make their pasta fresh every morning. <laughs> Yum! Um, we are talking about the first half of this book. If you haven't read it, stick around. Um, maybe something will interest you. We are talking about lesbian necromancers in space. So if that's your jam, stick on by. Uh, these are the characters in the book to have a visual reference of everything. And if this gets a little bit too hard, my brother has just sent me uh, a prologue for his book that he's just written about orcs and shit. So I can read a little snippet of that as well if everyone is interested. Um, but if you're hearing voices, uh, so is Harrow. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a book joke. If you're hearing voices, it's the lovely community for book club. It is a paid perk uh, over at patreon.com slash geekbomb just for five dollars. You can get you're a part of the book club show twice a month for two hours a pop. I know it's a big ask and everyone steps up, which is so sweet. Uh, some people cook while this happens. Others drink. It's all great. <laughs> No, Jimmy, it's not orcs shitting. It's orcs and shit. <laughs> My brother has written a book, 2,000 words on orcs shitting. I'll begin. <laughs> no. Uh, Uncle Chicken says, hey, just want to drop in and say congrats on making partner. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And thanks to everyone who's still... <laughs> Gross, Darcy. That's not... You're not no, you're not supposed to answer that. Darcy. See, this is the thing about book club. Sometimes my mum pops on to chat 
in the group and then other times my brother will pop into the actual written chat and we're starting to learn what the Garrett household's like and I'm sure some people are very scared because you instantly answered that orc shit would be black. Uh, thanks for the ideas, it's time to do research. What have you done? <laughs> What has everyone done? Why? All orcs poop. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, sometimes orcs just need to poop. Uh, G Dub says, I miss you drinking on half hour happy hour, but always love your content. Um, thank you. We're coming up, we're in September now, October, November, December. Who knows what could happen? We usually are a holiday podcast the last couple of years, so we'll see. I have been planting some seeds. We will see. Uh, Gaia says the Garrett family is exactly what I imagined. I feel like sometimes I'm the tame one. I don't know if Darcy's about to correct me and just absolutely obliterate me in the chat, which I'm cautiously watching. What do you mean no? I'm the tame one. How am I not? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm the least tame? That's some bullshit. No, tr true scorn. No, do not, do not encourage him. He is incorrigible. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, KP Dubs, thank you for the, dropping those bits earlier. Yikes. Necromancer books, good. Uh, Vaden's, oh, Vaden's giving a, a, an opinion, the, not an opinion, but you know, like a, an, a what was it called? Obser observation. Thank you. Well done, Maud. The Garrett seemed to be dirty minded, but also somehow very wholesome. Oh yeah, that's so true. I can be both. Yes, I can be. I think I actually tweeted that. It's like, I can be both. Uh, I can swear like a sailor and be wholesome at the same time. And that is my, that's my superpower. Alvin for God. Thanks so much for the follow. We're talking about lesbian necromancers in space, if that's your thing. <laughs> troll, troll, troll. Um, that's like you and mum. Yeah, we're both we're both very inappropriate, but absolutely wholesome. I love mum's giggle. She giggles so much, and it's the sweetest thing ever. You giggle sometimes, Darcy, but only if it's really, really funny. And usually, that's you. You only think something is that fun. The only thing you think is that funny. Mum struggling. The only thing that you think is that funny are your own jokes is what I wanted to say about that. Okay. Um, why is or Ortius trying to kill Harrow? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Chat. I'm going to start reading a name out. Uh, oddball. You seem to actually know a lot more shit than you're letting on. Why is Ortius? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I did finish the book last week when I was at the airport, so. But I think they're trying to test Harrow to see, it, like, if she's an actual lictor or what's going on with her power. Because at the dinner table, she's like, ah, he's trying to kill me. And they're like, oh, pish posh. Okay. But in the beginning of the book, she's thrown up a lot. And then it's just weird at the start. Oddball. <laughs> If this is like a, I get teachers now, because if someone's always going to call on a person and they always have the answer, like I'm marking you down as that. That's our new path. Uh, Michelle says, I was under the impression that Autist number one thinks that she's a liability. So she's got to go. And everyone's like, well, maybe you are. If you die, you die. Lisa, you've got another theory for that one as well. Jump on in. Yeah, just kind of what uh, Michelle was saying. I, I thought they had said that uh, the Ortis, the first, is uh, supposed to protect John <laughs> and that he sees her as a threat and that's why he's doing what he's doing. So and they're just kind of like letting him do his thing. <laughs> she's a threat because she's not strong enough because she went she's, to... They, they said she was dangerous or something. 
but they didn't explain why or how she's dangerous. I need an explanation. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, for those that don't know, in this necromantic world, uh, if you are a necromancer, you have a second with you, uh, so like your support, and your support is a cavalier. So they do all the melee fighting while you resurrect skeletons or you throw bones and splice people with little bone daggers. So that's, well, every house, there are nine houses and every house has like a different way uh, to explore their necromancy. They're either like a flesh, flesh magician so they can like, you know, put pieces of organs back together. There's a bunch of different things. Someone probably knows that person's not me. I've been trying, but I find it really hard. <laughs> um, Oddball says I'm going to hold my tongue on that one. Um, oh, Clever Girl says, yeah, he had a vision, some kind of insight that made him see her as a threat. Okay. Yes, Michelle, you've got a theory on why she's danger zone. Uh, yeah. So I, and like, I'm not follow. I think I'm very much like everyone who's like, I'm not sure I'm following this, but I'm here for the ride. But they talk about her predecessor in like the first of her house and how the conversion to Lichterhood was messed up. And the king says he would never want to see that again. And so I wonder if it's some like weird inheritance or bloodline thing. And um, I think Colleen's theory about, or where, where she says there's a vision, I wonder if there, it's something tied with that, if it's there's like something wrong with the house and lictors that come from that house. Got it. So Harrow, it's called Harrow the Ninth because she's from the Ninth House. Um, we had a picture of all the houses, but they're dead or they never existed. So I'm not going to show it to you. It's too clumsy at this particular state in time. But Harrow... Um, the ninth planet stopped producing necromancers. And so to create Harrow uh, and to make sure that she was a necromancer, her parents, the king and queen or emperor, the empress, the, the ones in charge, uh, made the decision to kill 500 children and babies so that their souls could be used to create 200, 200, I rounded up, <laughs> 200 babies, um, oh, but then God sent 500 people back to the planet, uh, 200 children to make sure that Harrow was a necromancer. So that's sort of the burden that she's been carrying. Uh, so she's always felt like she's got survivor's guilt. She's racked with sort of like, uh, like she's got blood on her hands, but she didn't do it, but she kind of feels that that's the case. She's torn between... I'm responsible for the death of 200 children. I shouldn't be here. And because 200 children were sacrificed to make me, I have so much pressure on me to be the person that, you know, they did all this for. Um... <laughs> Can we please play the, <laughs> Can we play the sound? Can we play the sound? I can't cheer in my own channel. No, I want to play the... Where are we? Hello there. Hello there. <laughs> That's Pai Lang's joke. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> and and Miss Necromance is like, Bill, which is why I love it even more. <sighs> so that's Harrow's um, issue at the moment. Of course, my battery is about to go low. Good. Fuck. That's all right. I've got a plan B. We're okay. Um, so I've kind of just gave you a little bit of what happened in Gideon, but you understand Harrow is a person now and this torment uh, because it's in a lose-lose situation. Um, T-Bone says, got to go. Congrats again. Yay. Thank you for popping on by. Um, so what we're saying now is that the emperor slash God, he's aware of this really, really sordid, awful past uh, the decision that was made to create Harrow, and that somehow is impacting how she's become Lictor, or is it exclusively the fact that she didn't want Gideon to die for her, that that had to happen for her to go into Lictorhood, or is it a bit of both? Who wants to unmute and talk about that? Colleen. Play the board. Um. 
I think that uh, because she keeps saying that her um, cavalier and she thinks it's Ortis willingly gave up um, his life for her but she rejected it. So I think at some point she had come to really respect and and feel deeply about Gideon. Um, so I don't know if she actually rejected um, that melding that they're supposed to do, or if it's just like mentally she has uh, blocked all this out. We don't know. We just don't know. Options. There are options. I, I I find it really hard where both could be true. Just tell me which one. Toaster Poster says, at the beginning of each section starts with six months before the Emperor's murder. Did he have a vision of Harrow murdering the Emperor? Bum, bum, bum. Some people are exempt from weighing in. Oh, Ball, I'm looking at you. Kate, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Who do we think's killed the, killed the emperor? Vaden. Ah, uh, no. I mean, I thought he was being attacked by uh, those, those was it other resurrection beasts. So the only thing I think of maybe is like Haro, because Haro was created in a similar way as like the resurrection beast, right? Yeah. A, a ton of deaths, right? Yeah. So possibly she's like because she's not like a real lictor, she's like a part lictor. She could be like some kind of part lictor, part resurrection beast. So that's my wild speculation that's better than what i could have come up with uh and the cartographer is going way back to uh, alpha book club days we're gonna need a conspiracy theory board for this we need to flip the board and start putting the, the string here as well michelle on that note who do you think uh <laughs> who do you think is gonna kill the emperor and kate and oddball <laughs> kate's like it was colonel mustard in the library with the skeleton he's like no it was the professor uh but michelle who do you think is killing the emperor at the strike of I, midnight. I think it's Harrow, but I think there's like going to be weird magic stuff. And like maybe there's like some Steven Universe melding of folks stuff happening. I don't know. I think like there's because they go to travel to the palace or whatever they're in now. They're in that like weird ghost soup place for a while. So I just have like. Is there like multiple universes and stuff and are they crossing over? I don't know. Like it's all, I feel like things are just like, there's so many coincidences. So I don't know what's real and what's not. <laughs> if we get t-shirts made up that say ghost soup, <laughs> would we all get them? <laughs> yes. Ghost... You have to travel through a ghost soup. <laughs> ghost soup is so good. Uh, we've already got evidence of Harrow waking up uh, having stabbed a corpse of... Starts with C. Whatever her fucking name is. Corithia. But she's already done it. Whoever's in the coffin, she came to and realised that she'd just sort of um heavily shanked and speared a corpse and has no recollection of it so something like that could absolutely happen a couple of people just started following Knox f101 and mike manboy thank you so much for the follows welcome my name's maud we're doing book club it's a complicated book so my eyes will roll from time to time um ghost soup was a movie made in 1992 oh, facts we love them that's another slogan around here. Um, who's the body? The body's obviously the projection of whatever power was kept in the, to the locked tomb, hence it being called the locked tomb series. Uh, who has another theory on that? Who's the body? What's the body? Who's the body? Thanks, Black Wolf. Oh, Colleen. Um I'm talking a lot today. <laughs> hey, as long as you've got any understanding, it's very welcome. <laughs> Well, um, she, the reason her parents hung themselves is because she went into the, um, into the locked tomb and saw the body there and fell in love with her. Yeah. Um, and so I think 
that this body she keeps seeing is that body she fell in love with that is like a projection of her mind um, because nobody else can see the body. Um, but I think it's the body from that locked tomb. I am. And, the and, oh, yes. Keep going. Um, well, and something about earlier, um, as someone was talking, it seems like um, wasn't that body the the lictor that went bad uh, from her house? Um, the, the original one they were talking about? Oh, the one that the emperor actually cast away and said, don't open that. And the parents realized that she did and then killed themselves. <laughs> what yes. a sentence. What yeah. a sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the undoing of the world kind of deal. Which has adopted a, yeah, fair enough that 15 people just bailed after I said that sentence. You're like, what is happening in this book? Yes, that's correct. Um, yes, so a fun fact about me, I don't necessarily use source material to do all um, the snooping around uh, by default and by accident, but it keeps happening and it happened with um, House of the Dragon. But I look up, like, I, I don't, pay attention to the fiction. I pay attention to the online facts. And the hardest part about keeping secrets is that toy companies will put out um, memorabilia or, you know, merchandise. And that usually spoils things that happen in the movie. Um, oh, oh, thank you, Stranka. Appreciate that. Thanks for tier one. Um, other things is, you know, is this character going to be a big deal in this show? Well, it turns out that they're on for the rest of the season and have been renewed for season two. Oh, cool. In this particular instance, this is the second book in the series and they've just announced the fourth. That's my deducing. But who is Nona? It's Nona Jesseret, but Nona is Harrow's replenished self with memory restored. But what's the next book after that? Gaia says, the only thing I've gotten from this chat is Maud is now partner and Dorizo is intrigued by black orc poop. Yeah, that kind of, that's kind of it. Yeah, you nailed it. If I start saying no, names like Nona Jesseret and Ianthe and Calliope and who else have we got? What other big, long names are in this book? That's, it can be a lot. It can be Augustine. Uh, Mercy Morn. Mercy Morn. Darcy, Darcy says intrigued is putting it mildly. Good, good. Uh, what's Ianthe's last name again? To, 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 Tyrannodorus or something. So uh, I have a theory. Tridentarius. Thank you both Baden for saying it and Kate for spelling it. Uh, Jimmy, do you said you had a theory? Yeah, I would yeah. like to fit this theory. Let's go. Um, here we go. So um, I was thinking um, not too long ago about uh, like how there, there are different parts. You know, you were saying like the memories, the body, all of this thing. Yep. And so I thought to myself, like, uh, when when Gideon passed or sacrificed themselves, right, and um, they were obviously separated in some way, you know, be it their mind, their spirit, their body, whatever. Yeah. They were separated into different individuals. Yes. Or or maybe like parts of other individuals, and they were purposely kept apart so that they could not change uh, what Gideon was trying to do. So like maybe. Uh, the culmination of all those people come back together like Voltron and, you know, eventually, you know, like try and finish what Gideon started. That's my, my theory. Soul Voltron, Soltron. Pretty much. Soltron. Yes. Uh, because in this book, anything can go, it could happen. It could yep. happen. Mm -hmm. It could happen. Just spit all in it. Oh, that could happen. That could happen. We need to get like, uh, it's like fantasy football or whatever. So whenever something pops up, you get points. Um, 
so Ianthi tried and Terius, tried and Terius. What an interesting relationship. They're the only two out of the eight. They're the only two out of the eight. Not lictors, because they weren't lictors. Necromancers um, that became lictors. And D Darcy, did you just come into the Discord under my... Did you just pop into the Discord, Darcy? You did, you cheeky thing. What? Come on. You want to talk about walk poop now? Okay, well, click book club. And if you're not talking, press mute because I can <laughs> please hand help. What is with my family not being able to Discord? Uh, you were in there. Go into book club. But if you're not talking, press mute because I can hear mum in the background. But if you want to come in to book club, come into the – there you go. And you mute. Well done. Great. Um, but now that you're in here, Darcy, unmute, say hi to everyone. My whole family's coming. Next is dad. Next, Jack will pop in. Maybe the dog. Unmute, Darcy. Say hi to everyone. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh. What? I haven't, haven't set up anything. What's going on? <laughs> Are you on your phone? No. Are you on your computer? Now I, can't, I can't. Okay. I, I can see you, the stream, but it's muted. What? Um, <laughs> but you can hear me. <laughs> you can hear me. What's going on? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> um, you're a data oh. analyst, and this is freaking you out. Love it. Great. I got. I got a work work um webcam thing. Yeah. So you but, could probably, if we do a video, you'd be able to do that. Uh, you've got a microphone on your computer. Yeah. And that's the microphone that's just automatically. I don't have. I don't have my headphones or anything. I can't. I can't. Um. I don't want to, I want to see the stream as well. I'm just looking at this, this book club thing where everyone's got the different colors and everything. What? Yeah, that's okay. I know where well, you get it from because this sounds awfully a lot like mum doing all yeah, this. Yeah, well, I haven't really used, um, I think I've used um, Discord like once or twice. Maybe. Uh, Colleen says open up two scripts. Colleen's what? I do have two screens open. I do have the Twitch in there. Colleen, are you 60 something? Not to out you and your age. That is such a no disrespect at all, but she's schooling you, Darcy. She's telling well, if you. I, but if I unmute, then you'll just hear the stream twice. You'll hear me twice. So. 70. Colleen is 71 and she's teaching you how to Discord and watch stream. Colleen, the best. Um, she says open two screens up. Uh, Michelle I says, I, just don't have headphones. I don't have headphones. If you're it's on Google all... Chrome, you can write, you can right click the Twitch tab and select mute site. Oh, community. This is what we're here for. Community. You want to do that, Dart? Mute site. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're in Google Chrome, just right click the Twitch tab up the top and you can select mute site. Okay. Well, I've muted the stream anyway. Okay. Okay. Um, so Darcy, when we have a new person mm -hmm. pop into pop into book club, we get them to talk about where they're calling from, what uh, books they like reading, what their favorite book is, what genre they like. So go on. The floor is yours. Um, sure. Um, I quite like um, fantasy books, I guess. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, there I'm up there. Hello. Yeah. I can everyone see my face. Oh, that's not a great photo. But, you know. Look um, like, I look like a bearded thumb. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm looking at my book list. I've got quite a lot on there. Um, I've just read, uh, I just read just then The Hobbit and The Cursed Child last week. Um, both of them I had read before, but I'm just reading them for a bit of research. Oh, I do this thing, Darcy, when if anyone says a book that they've read, I pull it from my bookshelf. See if it's in there. I've done that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've also got on my list right now, I can read them out. They're on the piano. Um, Great Gatsby, Three Men in a Boat, 1984. Oh. Um, the Ultimate Aphrodisiac by Robert G. Barrett. I don't have that one, but I got 1984. No. Yeah. Um, Cormac McCarthy, Up the Road. No. You'll have this next one, Hitchhikers. Um, so I've got Ready Player One. Um, now I've read that one a lot and that one gets a lot of hate online for, um, it's kind of sexist kind of writing, I guess. Oh, 
it's right here. Not sexist attitudes. So I'm going to read that again to find understand more that angle. Mm-hmm. I've got Bill Bryson's Down Under. I've got a fl- his Fleas autobiography. I've got Scarwood by Brandon Sanderson. I've got The Poppy War. I've got <gasps> the fourth Harry Potter book. The what one? The fourth Goblet. And I've got um, Ichabod, also by J.K. And I've got Project Tell Mary and One, Two, Three, Four, which is a Beatles book. All right. So there's enough of them that I've managed to pull out. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And out of the – that's our – this is our cousin's book. She's written two books. Yeah. And I yeah, okay. read The Village of Elvis Park Chuck. Um, out of all the books I've bought you, which one's been your favorite? Uh, the ones that you just bought me like two weeks ago. You haven't even, no, I bought you other books. Which ones? Name of the Wind. Oh yeah, yeah. I love Name of the Wind. That's one of my favorite. That's my book. So, uh, uh Adam, Adam Vision. I was going to read Name of the Wind again, but I see Name of the Wind and Wise Man's Fear as like, um, massive sections, like of three. Cause in Wise Man's Fear, doesn't he like. He goes to that like monk place, and then he goes to like a forest place. Um, and Darcy. I didn't like that woman in, in the first one, Name of the Wind. What's her name? Ah, uh, yes. you married her though. <laughs> she was like a I don't know. What was her name? De. De. Somewhat, I say it, but yeah, I, just, I don't know. I didn't like her much. Dana depends who you ask. She's got different names, but Dana. Um, yeah. Amanda Tass is in here. Moderator Amanda Tass says, fun fact, it's National Buy a Book Day today. <laughs> Darcy, I bought you Project Hail, or I suggested Project Hail Mary. Did you read that one? No, I've got it, but I haven't read it yet. Um, so I've got like, our book chat like loves that two or three, one. Sorry, I've got like two or three hours a night. And at the moment it's a bit of reading, but it's a lot, of, a lot more writing. So, um, Shall we read a little bit of your prologue? I'll give you a chapter or two. Well, it's it's the product. It's tiny, but I don't want to read it. I've already got you know. I'm already anxious. <laughs> Do you want me to read it in front of everyone? There's 282 people watching right now. Um, sure, if you want. I mean, that's kind of why you read a book, write a book, because you want people to read it, I guess. And plus, you want to, you can do audio books. Oh, that's right. I said I would read it for you. You need to write more women in your books if that's the case. Um, well, don't <laughs> read the prologue then. I I don't think there's one. <laughs> Um, am I doing all the orc impersonations? Um, yeah, if you want. Okay. Okay. Prologue. Uh, are we saying uh, the name I'll... of the book? Um, if you want. It's the Older Moon Trilogy. This is uh, book one, The Academy. Written by? Oh, Written by? Oh, me. Darcy Garrett. <laughs> Me? <clears throat> As the orcs ran headfirst into the forest, not one dared to look back. Low-hanging leaves were streaked in red as the bloody group hurriedly navigated the dense ancient woods. They stumbled across a dirt path which forced them to run at a slower pace in single file. That reminds me of the Tuscan... <clears throat> Even though they valued haste, Silence was required, and soon the soldiers were breathing and stepping in unison, cleverly disguising their number of six as one. You literally took that from the Tusken Raiders from Star Wars, Darcy. That's directly borrowed. Like, old Ben, they'll be back and doing great to them. Anyway, I'm supporting you. Stay on target. Thank you, Toast Post. The last orc tripped and fell with a thud, causing the rest to stop and freeze immediately. None moved a muscle, not even to check on the condition of fallen orc. They were all intently listening for the one noise that they had been dreading, the howls of their pursuers. Get up, whispered the leader, the largest of the orcs, after ten long seconds of silence. He still looked forward Uh, not having moved a muscle, despite perspiration and blood freely dripping over both of his brows. The clumsy orc got up, trying to be as noiseless as possible, and the group continued to run along the path again as one. All eyes were firmly directed down at the large feet in front of them, except for the leader, who, while navigating the path, occasionally stole glances in both directions. He was grateful that the winding path mirrored the edge of the forest some 50 yards to his left. He knew that out there in the open... 
was only death, but the right side, the forest side, was equally as undesirable, although it provided more protection. For hours, the orcs ran uncomplainingly, each one trying to blink away a vision of their own terrors. They forced themselves to think ahead, and not what they were running from, but where they were trapped. Uh, but, but they were trapped and lost in a forest in a war, alone and in desperate need of allies that they knew would not come. None of the orcs wanted to be the first to slow down, and it wasn't until the first light started to fade that the leader stepped out of sync. He mercifully stopped running, his broad green shoulders bent as he heaved in breaths, trying to recover from his frantic run. He turned to the others, showing off his brawny bare chest that had been fully soaked red. The five bloody strangers looked much the same as him, but were smaller, meaning they were younger and therefore less experienced than him. All of their knuckles were bone white as they were firmly gripping their weapons, most of which were sullied despite the day's battle. Is anyone wounded? He asked, inspecting each battered orc in turn. Even though they were all similarly covered in blood, the fact that they'd run so far led him to believe he already knew the answer. I'm giving you that much. How was that? Jimmy says, I think the orcs have to poop. Darcy says, thanks. There you go. Prologue, orcs running in a line away from what we don't know. Ooh. Bane says, nice, we've got an intriguing mystery to start. Fizzle sticks, 25 months, thank you. Colleen says, great hook. Oh, there you go, live feedback, Darcy. Steve says, colour me intrigued. There you go, Dart. Pylink says, hook good. <laughs> oh, Darcy's using my face. <laughs> That's a bit weird. <laughs> Um, there you go. Toaster Post says, that was really good, yes. There you go, instant feedback, yay. Um, am I trying every tactic to not talk about Harrow? Maybe. Our vaccine says, Nee, needs more female orcs. <laughs> and the cartographer says, more. <laughs> uh, Dart says, thanks. Thank you, everyone. There you go, Dart. We'll do some more as well. <laughs> We'll we'll read some more. Now read it again in the style of <laughs> nine cats. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll do I'll do one more sentence. Um uh where are we? Uh is anyone wounded? One young male tried to look brave amongst his peers, but his bottom jaw trembled as he shook his head, still gasping for air. A female swiftly wiped a bloody tear from her face, which inadvertently opened up a once dry cut on her cheek, causing it to bleed yet again. The leader wiped his own face with the back of his hand and looked to the forest edge and listened. I haven't heard any howls for some time, huffed one of the orcs quietly. That doesn't mean we're safe, countered another equally soft. Let's keep running, said another, even though he was still panting heavily. No, said the leader, turning back to the group. If they hunt us now, it's not by sight, but by smell. We'll need to find some water to wash ourselves clean. And quickly, KP Dove says, read it in an American accent. Without another word, the leader turned and continued down the path at a brisk pace. The remaining orcs, orcs, orcs. Can someone help me with orc in the chat? Can someone say orc for me? Orc. 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 Okay. Okay. Orc. Mm -hmm. Okay. The remaining orcs looked at each other apprehensively before amenably following their leader. We cannot smell worse than what we've left behind, said one of the orcs somberly, carefully avoiding some dry leaves on the ground. Eh? Eh? <laughs> Michelle says, five out of five, would listen to this audiobook. The narrator delivers a true performance. Transportive. Transportative, sorry. Uh, Octus says, hi, Maud. Read good. Darcy, did I ruin your book with those? Yeah. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Darcy, do, I mean, you, do you watch that? I, 
that. Yeah, I just didn't picture it being read like that, but yeah. No, that's how this book's narrated. So I've been using the narrator for that one. Uh, Steve uh, Starenka says, like the Channel 7 News. Okay. Uh, one young male tried to look brave amongst his peers, but his bottom jaw trembled as he shook his head, still gasping for air. A female swiftly wiped a bloody tear from her face. I've already read this part, my bad. I haven't heard some house for some time. That doesn't mean we're safe, counted another equally soft. No, said the leader, turning back to the group. If they hunt us now, it is not by sight but by smell. And we need to find some water to wash ourselves clean and quickly. There you go. That's a newsreader voice in Australia. Read it as chaffy. <laughs> Without another word, the leader turned and continued down the path at a brick pace. <laughs> what? These are all in jokes. <laughs> Read it in a Scottish accent. <clears throat> Once they were caught, <clears throat> you'll never take off. Take off for sure. Once they were confident, nope, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. What's a Scottish accent? A Scottish accent. They sit down and they make it happen. Right. Once they were confident that they didn't smell as bad, they resumed walking beside the creek instead of the path, hoping that the running water would help conceal the noise. Nah, I can't. That sucked. And I did it. I did it. And I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. Steve's dying. Great. The defenseless words. What are the defenseless words? Hi, Earth Jen. Thank you so much for the lovely words. I needed an on-ramp for that one. <laughs> I can't do Scottish. Oh, if there's one Scottish Scott, Scott in here, I would feel terrible about that. Um, and the cartographer says, well, just clip this, Darcy, and just start spamming the publishers. <laughs> and that's how it's done. Very, very funny. I'll have a read of that later as well. We've just got a couple more questions about this Harrow the ninth book because fuck it we've all read 28 chapters minimum of this christopher walken no i suck at him i can hear it in here but i cannot say it <gasps> junior daxbo is actually scottish and it was not that bad it was better than the last australian i heard doing it fizzle sticks just gifted a sub to earth jen thank you so much for doing that uh vaden was going to audition for the narrator part oh but can't beat this <laughs> That's sweet. Oddball says you need to get Troy Baker for that one. The Scottish voice, the voice. I I did a few Irish accents over the course of Fungens. The bartender, she be for Irish all the time. What can I get you, lads? <laughs> and then, of course, they all turn into this one, which is why I hate the narrator. No, I don't hate the narrator. I hate the mirroring, the fact that I have to face myself with the reading of this book, because this is the only voice that I can do as well. <laughs> Talentless hack. <clears throat> what is with Harrowhark writing herself letters and wiping Ianthe's memory slash stopping her from talking about what happened? Oddball. Calling on you. I don't think Ianthe's memories are wiped. She just agreed not to. The, the letters are in Harrowhark's special script or right. code. So it just doesn't even know what it is. Yeah, but I don't know what all the letters are for. There's one in case of emergencies. There's one in case someone tries to kill her. There's one in case uh, Gideon dies. There's one in case Anthe dies, isn't that? Chapter four. That was a lot yeah. in chapter four. And I'm not sure where all the letters come into play. Um. Letter number one. Oh, these are the guidelines. Uh, letter number two of 24 to be read immediately on coherence. Guideline number one, stay alive. Guideline number two, you can never return to the ninth house. Guideline number three, the sword will remain on you at all times. Guideline number four, you are compromised. Guideline number five, you owe Ianthe Tridentarius the favor of the chain. Guideline number six, read the other missives only if and when you meet their requirements. Guideline number seven, examine Yanthi's jaw and tongue after you read this. What was that about? 
What was the jaw and tongue thing again? Because she's been, Yanthi's been corrupted. Oh. Ember and Ilya says, by this point in the book, I thought she might have opened a couple more letters. Interesting. We've only seen one letter so far. Vaden says she needs to unlock each letter like she's fulfilling a quest to earn them. Mm. KP Dub says, what's up with the sword? Oh my gosh. Lisa, did you just make the ghost soup or was that on the internet already? Because that's the sweetest thing I've ever seen. <sighs> ghost soup. I just made it. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> That's so great. If you're in the Discord, you can see it. It's worth it. I'm tearing up. It's so sweet. Uh, Michelle says it's very Jason Bourne to have a wake wake up all blank slate. Yeah, at least we knew Jason Bourne's history, though, when someone came in being like, Jason, here's the exposition so that, that everyone knows what making sense. We just don't have that in here. That's not a complaint. It sounds like I'm complaining. That's not a complaint. Amanda tasks uh, the spelling error on Discord. You really are the next gory, huh? It was a goryism. Now it's maybe a tassism. Interesting. The next question was the flashbacks that take place in Canaan House completely contradict the events that took place within the Gideon book. What do you think of the new big bad, the resurrection beasts? Uh, someone earlier, apologies that it. That can't, I think it was Vaden, said um, that the resurrection beasts were made eerily similar to how Harrow was made. Um, the, the, the size of the resurrection beast, which is like tens of thousands of kilometers long and wide. What do we think as the, the big bad, the sleeper, all of these things? Are we feeling threatened by it? Um, Lisa. What do you think of the big bad ghost soup? <laughs> I don't even understand what the big bad is. So it's not a good question to ask me. Resurrection beasts. So in around chapter two or three, John is telling Harrow what the resurrection beasts are. And they, ugh, I don't really know either, but there was a whole part about it. Where basically, uh, KP Dubs, take it from here. The resurrection beasts are. Oh, I, I don't know exactly what they are. It just mm -hmm. they gain energy from like dying planets or resurrecting entire planets, something like that. Love it. Vaden, what and else is about the resurrection beasts? We're passing this on to everyone. Okay, well, what I would say is, uh, I don't know what they are really beyond what they've been said, but it's it, it feels too impersonal right now like they like they're they're very super powerful they show that but like there's no like it doesn't feel like it's just like i don't as a, as, a, as a reader i don't understand why i care too much about them doing damage to anything like i have a personal stake in, in what they're doing it kind of actually do you know what it made me feel like matrix two and three um where they were hiding out and then as soon as these things kind of like discovered their location they either have to they, they mainly have to leave and flee because uh they're too powerful and will kill them i got that vibe from it but that's kind of it toaster poster says no one in uh no one is really reacting to these threats with any urgency or if they are there is that moment i think it was when ort orty is what i'm going to call him uh was like we, I think the first introduction to him is like, they're on our tail. They're seven years early. Uh, we either have to stay or fight. What are we going to do? Stay or fight, stay or fight. I mean, wait, fighting is staying. Uh, flee or fight, flee or fight. And so that's like the only time. And then I was like, ooh. And then it's like, okay, now we're going back to this time, which didn't actually happen. <laughs> um, yes, that's right. There were about 10 of them and now there's only three left. But to kill them has basically taken out everyone else. PS234, thank you so much for the follow. We're talking about Harry the Ninth, which is a book. Book good. Book good. Uh, thank you, regards, Darren, with that. Um, only two of the original lictors remain. The rest were killed. Um, the resurrection beasts also partially exist in the river and the real world at the same time. Too many layers. All right, cool. That's the resurrection beasts. Um,
Ember and Aaliyah, Lisa, you had one in here as well. Harrow's birth into necromancy is a dark tale, killing the 200 children and babies to attain it. Uh, we're now seeing the damage that's caused. Lisa asks, is this related to the things that Harrow can do that surprise the others? Who wants to jump on that one? We kind of touched on it a little bit. Because John, the God Emperor, is asking for that to stay a secret, and then John dies. Uh, okay, I'm, uh, PTB, play the board. Uh, the question again: Harrow's birth into necromancy is a dark tale, killing two hundred children and babies to attain it. We're now seeing the damage that that's causing. But Ember and Aaliyah asks: Is this related? to the things that Harrow can do that surprises others. Uh, she's gifted well beyond what she should be. Yes, play the board. I, I think it must be. That's the best explanation I can come up with why she uh, can last longer in the river and do those other things is her mysterious birth um, or her dark birth. Um, and it's back to the resurrection beast just a little bit though. It's Odd to me that what they do to create the lectors is actually drawing the resurrection beast. Like that doesn't seem like the best plan. Mm. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's all. It doesn't make sense. Uh, Ember and Aaliyah uh, to the question says, "We've seen the control that Harrow exerted over the running of Ninth House after the death of her parents. The letters, the strict instructions in the first one, the memory differences, etc. It feels like." It could be her rewriting her mind to deal with whatever's going on, which is very much uh, Kate's sentiment uh, that she was talking about at the beginning of the book. And the thing that she likes most about this book is the actual impact of mental illness and a deterioration of mental health as well and coping mechanisms that the brain can put into place beyond even our controls or consciousness because it will take memories and put them into a subconscious to protect ourselves so that we are able to survive. And fun fact, that's happened to me. And Colleen said earlier, it's uh, you know someone that that's happened to as well. The brain's a funny thing like that. The Forlorn Knight has just followed. A big hello, welcome. We're chatting about book club. Harry the Knight, these are the characters that we're talking about. Thank you to the artist who's really made this a lot easier for me. Uh, KP Dub says, what's up with the sword? Especially since we've just heard in these letters that it must stay on Harrow at all times. Who's got a theory about the sword? Jimmy, sword theory. Is this a part of the Voltron, Soltron? Oh, well, it could very easily be that way. Yeah. But like I said to you before, uh, they're all different parts because uh, much like... Uh, you know, like the separation of, you know, the soul, the body and stuff like that. Why not have some sort of uh, strength or, or some, some sort of part that belongs to it? And, you know, because who else can wield that sword besides her, right? Well, is it is Gideon's anyone ever sword? trying to pick up the sword? Lisa, you know? Lisa was asking. Hello, Lisa. Actually, you can ask it, Lisa, if you want to. I just couldn't remember if they said, is that the sword that Gideon had in the first book? If maybe it has something to do with that, but I don't know. They made. <laughs> I don't know. I'm lost. <laughs> I don't know. There was such an emphasis on Gideon's sword because she used to fight with two smaller blades, but was forced as a cavalier to fight with a much bigger blade, almost like a great sword. Um, and Very with similar to heads. Power Rangers, where it fuses together the sword. There it is. Yes, it all makes sense. It all ties together. Um, so that's the only other sword that we uh, have referenced is a rapier. And is that the rapier or is that the sword? Because that's the one that John's like, we need to practice, we need to practice, we need to practice. But Ianthe is getting practice from Augustine at the moment, but she can't even hold the blade because her arm's dead. For now, was dead. Hmm. Michelle says, I think it's Gideon's sword. I think if Harrow uses it, it will reveal something about Gideon that Gideon and Harrow don't want the Emperor to know. Oh, a fused secret. That's really cool. <gasps> That's really cool. Baden says, one thing I haven't heard mentioned is the ancient carbine rifle used by the person killing people in the Can Canaan house. Wow, that, that over my head. What? 
When? Huh. Yeah. They talked about it, like, they talked about how um, the people in the six died to, like, a, they say, gunshot uh, to the face. And the two of them died that way, both uh, Camila and Palomides. And, like, yeah, they basically said they had some kind of ancient carbon rifle. It was very strange. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's during those weird flashbacks. Thanks, Oddball. Okay, more evidence lining up. I The whole time my brain's like, yeah, but are they even real? Were they even there at all? And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, KP Dubs is asking all the important questions. Will they smooch? Is that Ianthi and uh, Harrow? Because they already technically have. Is the sleeper Gideon, says Lisa. I love this. Ooh, conspiracies happening. And then you're saying that there's a line at the end of chapter three. There has been another girl who grew up alongside Harrow, but she has died before Harrow was born. I yeah, definitely had like a little ding ding go off when I read that one because it's like, why would you just drop that in? How is how is that something subtle? Like that's a very important thing, surely, surely. Emperor Talia says, from the first book, it seemed like the Cavaliers used rapiers because they are a light sword that the often non-fighting necromancers could wield without being super physically strong after they turn into a lictor. But Gideon was trained with the big two-handed sword, which required a lot more physical strength to wield. And that's why we love strong women. Oh, come on, grow bigger. I will get, I will get bigger muscles. Cavalier this. And the cartographer says the wounds by the rifle also obscure people's features. It's tough to know who's actually dead. Man, if someone couldn't tell that I'd die because I didn't have a face, I would be so upset. I have a giant scar down my leg. It's in the shape of it's in the shape of an L on her calf muscle. I'm trying to get swole. I think muscles on women are awesome. Baden says, is Gideon already dead? Why? Is Gideon already dead? Why sh she didn't die when the ship she was on that? What? Yeah, they didn't. I'm so sorry. I wrote that stupid. Okay. Help okay, me. So, what I was trying to say was um, if maybe Gideon was already dead when the car was created, that's why when the nerve gas on the ship she was on, like the so one that created die. Haro, yeah, that's why, that's why she didn't die. That makes sense. Because she was already dead. That sentence you wrote did not. What you just said in that theory does. Uh, so you think Gideon is the girl who died before um, Harrow? Yeah. Ah, uh, that checks out. But then how do we have like such a uh, tangible face, voice, essence of a grown woman who died but never got there? Oh, because nothing ever really fucking dies. They're necromancers and... Eh. Catch-22 says, Lol Maud, if it makes you feel any better, I have a giant scar on my left shin from where I almost lost a leg. Whoa, that's a story. Yikes. Mine, I just fell from a glass table <laughs> when I was drunk. Toaster Poster says, I do that too. I try to rewrite a sentence and nothing makes sense. <laughs> Guy says, muscles on women are very nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jimmy's got scars as well. <laughs> Diagonal coin, diagonal out, diagonally, diagon, diagonal. What? Harry Potter's fucked me up. I can't say diagonal anymore. Diagonal. Diagonal coins just followed us. Thank you. <laughs> Diag in all. Ah. Uh. Thank you so much for the follow. Sorry. <laughs> Diagonal. <laughs> That's, uh, yep. I like that Darcy's conveniently left now that I've helped him with his book. It's shade. Um, all right, really quickly, everyone, let's go around. We've got six minutes to do so, so make it super, super punchy. You can type it. You can unmute. What did you like about this book so far? What do you not like about this book so far? Who wants to go first? Unmute now. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Break it down. Like it. I love. I love the the campiness of it. I love the uh, horror. No, no. Of it one all. thing. One thing. We got to be quick. One thing. Yes, that's it. Okay. What did you not like? Confusing words sometimes. Bingo. Love it, Vaden. What did you go? Okay. 
the theme. I love the the use of the the mechanic and all of the body parts that she uses and the wording. Yes, I think it's clever. I don't, but yes. What don't you like? Uh, everything else. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sassiest I've heard you be ever. Amazing, Colleen. What do you like? What do you not like? Um, I don't like the way it's jumping around so much to, uh, not only in the, uh, second to third person, but also in time. Um, I, I'm not crazy about that. Yep. What do you like? I, I like the mystery. Love I, it. I like trying to figure out what's going to happen. Yes. Great. Great. And we'll do some more uh, spoiler conspiracies in the chat as well. Uh, PTB, what do you like? What do you not like? I like the humor and uh, the different similes. They just crack me up. Sometimes they're very colorful and sometimes they're just completely flat. And I think it is uh, <laughs> very effective. Yeah. Um, I I. I'm a little confused. I don't really mind it, but that's probably the worst thing for me. Yep. Love it. Cool. Uh, KP Dubs, what do you like? What do you loathe? I like the mystery, the sort of puzzle aspect to it. We're trying to put it all together. Um, nothing I don't like yet. However, if this mystery does not get resolved by the end, then I'm going to hate it. You're going to crack the shit. Um, oddball, what do you like? What do you not? I saw here that the pacing was good for the most part. And God's name is John, and he's just a dude. <laughs> Love that. What and did you not like? <laughs> for most of the book, I had no clue what was going on. Yep. Love it. Cool. Lisa, like, didn't like. And Chris, make sure you write yours so I can read it out. Oh, you didn't yeah, read it. You read not, it. I'm not liking how confused I am, but I also, what I like about it is I'm just like in my head trying to figure out what's going on, and that's what's keeping me hooked. I'm yep. wanting to read the book. So, like, I want to know what happens. Okay, good. Kate, what do you like? What do you not like? I don't like that there's a learning curve to this book. Mm. It makes it difficult to recommend it to people. And while I don't mind a difficult book, it's a problem for a lot of people in enjoying it. So, it's almost like a detriment a little bit. Yep. I love the ending. You bitch. <laughs> That's good for us, though. That's good for us. But, like, oh, to dangle that carrot. No, I mean, I mean that actually is good. So everyone who said they like a mystery, the ending's good. Uh, Michelle, what did you like? What didn't you like so far? I like the flipping back and forth of the perspective. It's very unusual. It reminds me a lot of reading novels especially indie ones that are more experimental it has yes. like the experience is very similar it's very sandman very monstrous if you've read those books um and i do really like that in this form. very interesting to absorb it i don't dislike anything yet but whole, whole book left true true also double double check i want to double check Kate, is it okay that i said that i just i know that we joke in jest but i never want to overstep you bitch. I know I'm a bitch. <laughs> you're our bitch, though. Kate, you're our bitch. Um, me, what I don't like about it, it feels like I'm being force-fed a thesaurus for absolutely no point or purpose. What I do like about it is that we're all reading it together and we get to share it. Oh, and we make it better together. Your homework, finish the book. I'll see you same time next week as we go, oh, that's what it was. And then most of you try to convince me to continue reading this series. And I say, I'm good. Mod, mod good. <laughs> mod good. Uh, thanks, everyone. Should we raid? Who's online? Whose day can we make? Thank you, everyone, again, for celebrating the fact that we managed to get partner on this channel. A oh, woo woo. Oh, that's right. We always like to take it over to um, 
boop, 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 Gary Witter because he's doing his new series. And I'm going to try and get him on a book club because he's technically writing this as an audio book performance kind of thing, which is a lot of fun. But he starts just as I finish. So everyone drop some hellos for Gary Witter. He's doing stuff really cool. He's the author of the Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Rogue One, not the Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Uh, he's written a lot of great movies. He's very talented and he swears like an absolute sailor. Um, enjoy the show if you do stick around. If not, keep reading that damn book, yeah? Love you all.